Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will tell you the story of how I got into software engineering. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. First of all, everyone, happy new year, happy 2019. I hope the new year brings you a lot of joy, completion of all the goals that you have for yourself and a lot of personal growth. For those of you new to my channel, I talk about tech and life in Silicon Valley. Let's get started with my story. Back when I was in Belarus, where I was born and raised, in school I was really interested in sciences, which led me to pick University of Waterloo, their engineering program, as my alma mater for undergraduate studies, and I decided to go and study chemical engineering, which is quite far from software engineering. I didn't study software engineering or computer science in university. How I got into it was quite by virtue of circumstance. In second year of university, I decided to live in an entrepreneurial residence on campus called Velocity. It was summer of 2013. I uh, lived in that residence and I was learning a ton about the startup world, which was truly fascinating to me. Anything technology-based, new apps, new innovations, I always loved reading about it and taking interest in it and it all sounded really curious to me. So I absolutely loved absorbing information about it while I was in Velocity. And thoughts about trying to work in a technology field st started creeping into my mind. However, the caveat was that I never at the time saw myself programming if I were to go into tech. And why that is, is because actually I took some programming classes as part of my engineering curriculum in university and, and those classes were particularly in MATLAB. And MATLAB is most of the times used for scientific programming. And quite frankly, I was not interested at all in how to program a computer to draw a graph and then name an axis of that graph. I just found it really boring and because I found it really boring, I found programming concepts at the times the ones that I learned in MATLAB, the fundamental concepts of programming, really hard and I did not understand them. And now looking back, I think it was because it was MATLAB and it was because of the stuff that we were doing with it. So basically, I was completely not interested in programming at the time. A lot of my friends that I met while I was in this program were software engineers or studied computer science and they did all these amazing internships in Silicon Valley or somewhere in Canada in cool tech companies and I was really inspired inspired by their stories and I really wanted to try it out. And they were actually the ones that continued encouraging me to open my mind to programming and take some programming classes online, which finally I gave into and decided to try out Codecademy, which a lot of them recommended and try their uh, web development course. When I say web development in Codecademy, I'm not talking about building a web application from scratch, having a separate front end and back end and connecting all of that together and having some complicated logic. No, web development course that I took was just HTML, CSS, which we know HTML is not even a real programming language, it's markup. However, the caveat to that was that as soon as you program something, a concept that they teach you on the platform, it right away appears on the, on the screen. So it's like playing a game. You get instant gratification, instant reward, and that kind of sucked me in. I completed that web development course and I thought, huh, programming is not as bad as I expected. This was actually kind of fun. So I decided to not give up on just taking that course, but try taking more courses, which led me to Coursera. And Coursera, guys, by the way, is a great platform for learning. This video is not sponsored by Coursera. It's just amazing because they have so many courses from real universities and you can learn virtually anything you want and like learn from the best. So I decided to take an introduction to programming in Python course on Coursera. And Python, by the way, is great language for beginners. It has way less overhead than something like, let's say, Java that is very verbose, harder 
easier to read. Python just has an easier bar barrier to entry and easier to understand. So for you, for those of you who are beginners, I would recommend starting with Python. So I took that course um, in Python. I learned a little more about programming and by virtue of circumstance, I happened to be in Germany for a whole year on exchange at that time. My engineering curriculum in Germany was a little lighter than my curriculum in Canada. So I had this idea that programming is something that I want to continue to explore because I really wanted to try working at a tech company. So I decided to go ahead and see whether I can take courses in the German university on top of my curriculum and learn more about programming. I decided to take um, extra courses in my German university and the first course that I took was Introduction to Programming for Engineers in C. That was already a little different than that MATLAB course that I took before because it focused on programming fundamentals, it focused on learning data structures and some simple algorithm, but all of that was in C. It's not a high level language like Python or Java or Ruby or you name it. So it's a little closer to actual computer hardware, which forces you to understand memory management, how pointers work, how memory allocation works. And coding in C is quite a lot harder because a lot of that stuff is not abstracted from you. However, I, looking back at it, starting with C, learning some principles in C, I actually am very happy I did that because that made me understand more more of how a computer works in general. So don't be scared of C. C is still good. I, th I think you can learn a ton from programming in C and it just helps you understand the concepts deeper. I am by no means a pro in C. I just did that one course and that was about it, but that was quite a struggle because it just challenged me and pushed me to understand more. So that was the course that I took. And then one by one, I started learning and doing more. I made a really great friend at that university who actually studied computer science and she and I decided to work on a side project together. And that side project was an Android app. She already has done some Android development. I have not touched any Android development at the time, but I was super willing to learn and to grow and actually Another side note and another lesson is take projects, build something, have an idea and try to implement it. Through building something, you will learn so much more than just sitting there and reading books, reading theory, taking courses. So I really, really encourage you to do that. So her and I decided to build an app and that forced me to understand Java, understand mobile development, get into it. And it was a ton of fun and working with someone was really awesome also. Besides that, I was also lucky enough to get a job as a part-time developer almost at the beginning of my time in Germany, where in that office where I worked, no one actually coded but they wanted me to build a web app and I decided to build it in Python and I was just forced to learn on my own. I had a problem problem again, I had a project that I needed to complete, I was accountable and responsible for it so that really forced me to learn more about programming. Then besides that while I was in Germany I also took a course on iOS development which was really cool because again we were building a real life application for an actual client that was probably the best course I've ever took in university. Super hands-on, super fun, worked with a team. As you can tell from my narrative, I did a lot of things. I put myself out there, I got a part-time job with pretty much no experience, I took a lot of courses, I took a courses on top of my actual courses that I needed to take to for my degree. Um, so in reality, my exchange that was exchange in Germany was just studying all the time. Instead of traveling, which I thought I would do a lot of, I just went to the library and was there the whole day long, pretty much every single day, weekends included. That actually brings me to another lesson and advice that I have for you. Have a goal, set a goal for yourself, no matter how ambitious it is. Actually, the more ambitious it is, the better, because it will really push you and really challenge you. Set a goal for yourself and make a plan of how to reach that goal. I was so obsessed with the idea of trying to get into tech and um, getting a software engineering internship in it so that I can understand whether 
I liked it or not. That made me wake up every single day, early in the morning, pack my bags and go to the library and be there pretty much the whole day. Well, besides the times when I had to actually go to lectures or do something else. I did that over the course of a whole year. And trust me, it was really frustrating at times. I thought I was not smart enough. I thought I couldn't understand certain things. I thought it wasn't for me. It was really frustrating. I didn't make a lot of friends at the time because I was so obsessed with the idea of studying and learning that I didn't have time for social life. So I was like lonely and frustrated a lot of the times. But that idea, that goal that I had just pushed me so hard to keep going. I kept going at it and I kept, you know, throwing my time and efforts at it. And finally, the concepts that I was frustrated with, I figured it out because of hard work and perseverance. So if I can do it, you can learn anything you want also. And it doesn't have to be related to programming. It doesn't have to be programming in general, but that's just my advice for you. Just set a goal for yourself. If you try something quickly and you think it's not for me, you maybe you just didn't put enough time into it to really understand whether it was for you. To understand whether you like something, you have to put quite a bit of effort into trying it out most of the times it can just be oh like try out a 10 minute i don't know course online and then figure out that you didn't like it you know there are so many factors the instructor might have not been great the platform you were using might have not been great the book you picked up on the topic maybe it's not the way you perceive information well there can be so many things that could discourage you but just if you have an idea just keep trying keep learning then when I felt I was ready to interview and software engineering interview, at least in Canada and in the US, is a whole different beast. You basically have to life code in interviews and usually for any company you have multiple rounds of those interviews. So you kind of have to develop that skill of solving problems on the go. So when I decided that I was ready to apply for jobs, I started practicing for the interviews and cracking the code in interview is is absolutely amazing must have for that there's so many different platforms and websites lead code glassdoor for specific company interviews so i spent a quite a significant amount of time just practicing problems just throwing myself into understanding more of data structures and algorithms and i would say it's overall just besides interviewing it's super useful i think fundamentals are fundamentals you need to know them so i spent a lot of time practicing for interviews and then when i felt i was ready to interview i did anything I could. I cold emailed founders of small startups in Silicon Valley. I leveraged my personal network because I had friends that already knew people or worked at companies and saw whether they would be comfortable to refer me to companies. I stalked people on LinkedIn and emailed recruiters and emailed people to help me get my foot in the door. My friends were absolutely amazing. I had such an amazing support network where people would do mock interviews with me, give me advice. I'm forever grateful for that. So then I actually started applying and long story short, I was extremely lucky. I ended up with five different internship offers and one of them was Yelp. Yelp was the best choice that I had. I was really excited about the product. I already used it and loved it. And it was in San Francisco where I ultimately wanted to go. So I accepted the internship with them and I was on the Android team at the time. And again, connect the dots. I was working on the Android uh, mobile application as a side project and I already had some knowledge and expertise in it. So um, it worked out perfectly. And I did two internships at Yelp then I continued my degree in University of Waterloo in Canada and I completed it. I have a degree in chemical engineering. I picked up, I did pick up a computer science minor in my final year of university, but mostly actually for visa reasons because I wanted to go back to the US and US work visas are really tied with your experience and degree. So I thought it was quite necessary for me to have something computer science related on my papers. Um, and I did an internship at Airbnb and did an internship at another Canadian company. And that's how I pretty much ended up being a software engineer, which I am now. And that was my story of how I got into software engineering. And again, if you guys took anything away from this video at all, one thing that I do really want you to take away is just 
set goals for yourself and believe in yourself, be motivated, be confident, and it all will work out. Set a plan, just learn a ton, just throw yourself into it. Nothing comes without hard work. And you know, you might say that I went to a top university, so I had that big name school on my resume. I knew people who could, you know, walk me through the process of how to even study for interviews, got a job, part-time job as a web developer in, in Germany. You might say that those are the things that made me be who I am now, but even if you have access to those amazing things, and I won't discredit that that didn't help me in getting where I am now, you still need to put in the work. If you're, I don't know, like really rich or you went to an amazing school or whatever, you name it, you still need to work hard to show that you're competent and to take advantage of whatever extra resources you have. Nothing comes to you because of just who you are naturally. You need to work hard. That would actually be my biggest advice that I hope you take away from this video. Dream big, set a goal for yourself, and just work hard, work at it. And I'm 100% sure that those goals and those dreams will come true for you. That was about it for me, guys. That was my story of how I got into software engineering. Since this video turned out kind of philosophical and advice heavy. I would love for you to share the advice, life advice you learned or someone gave you. I would love to learn about it. So if you would be willing to do so, please share it in the comment section down below. And if you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and put the notification button on so that you know when the new content is coming. And I'm so, so, so grateful in 2018 for all of you and for all of the support that I have gotten with my YouTube journey that I only recently started. So thank you so much. <laughs> and have a great rest of the day. Bye for now.